everyone, it's Kid Girl here, here today to do a YouTube video. So in today's video, guys, I'm going to be going over the differences between rabbits and guinea pigs. I've been getting a lot of requests for guinea pig and rabbit videos, so I decided to do like a mash of the two so I can talk about both, and then I will be doing future videos on the separate species. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right term. <laughs> So guys, uh, to be clear, I have owned guinea pigs since like the fourth grade, so I know a lot about guinea pigs. Whereas rabbits, it will have, it actually has been one year since owning rabbits, I think August 1st. So it's been officially a year since I've owned rabbits. So I thought it would just be a good educational video in case you are looking to get a rabbit or a guinea pig. Guinea pigs, rabbits, you have to get more than one of each. <laughs> So, you know, I just thought it would be a good video. So, we're going to start off with their similarities, just because I feel like that would be a nice way to go into differences. Talk about their similarities and then their differences. So, some similarities between the two is that they both have pretty similar diets. Rabbits and guinea pigs eat pretty much the same thing. <laughs> they both need at least 80% of hay in their diet, and the hay really doesn't matter. It, see, the top two choices are oftentimes Timothy hay and then orchard grass. Um, orchard grass people usually use whenever they are very allergic to Timothy hay, but Timothy hay is normally the number one. And then on top of that, uh, babies and pregnant, like rabbits or guinea pigs, so if it's a baby or if your animal has is pregnant or has just had babies, it is really good to supplement them with alfalfa hay and alfalfa pellets. Um, but neither of them can have alfalfa for an extended period of time as adults because it is just very fatty and not good for them. So keep that in mind with both of these species types of animals. <laughs> Next, they need about 50% of veggies in both of their diets. Now, they can pretty much eat all of the same veggies, except for you really need to focus on calcium in a guinea pig's diet and make sure they are not getting too much because guinea pigs and calcium do not mix. They can have some, but not an excessive amount because then you end up with calcium stones, sludgy pee, and that is overall not good. Guinea pigs are very iffy whenever it comes to calcium. Then, guinea pigs also need a lot of vitamin C in their diet, or else they can develop an illness called scurvy. So you really need to like just boost them with vitamin C and even vitamin supplements daily. So for example, I feed bell peppers every day. That is like a staple in their diet. Rabbits on the other hand really like their leafy greens, their dandelion greens, which guinea pigs can also have, but they really need leafy greens and spinaches and kale and lettuces, that's all really good for them. Uh, they both need about 5% of pellets in their diet, and those should always be Timothy hay based. Um, that is the best for them. You do not want alfalfa based. It's just not good for either of them. So yeah, 5% of pellets for each is good. Now you can go pelletless with these guys, but it depends on if you are supplementing the correct uh, vitamins and nutrients they need in their overall diet. Something else to consider is the fact that they both types of these animals need companionship. Now, some people may think this is more of an opinion on my behalf, but guinea pigs are herd animals, therefore they should be kept in pairs or more than pairs. Rabbits also, in my opinion, if they thrive with companionship, they need companionship. Unless your animal is aggressive towards others, then you really need to step up and get them a friend. <laughs> that is my opinion, I feel very strongly about that. If you go into this knowing you can't get more than one, yet you just get one, that's fucked up, in my opinion. <laughs> now, of course, if you didn't know any of this about rabbits or guinea pigs and you only have one and you can't afford the, the space for another one, that's a different story. So don't think I'm judging you if you didn't know any better. <laughs> the other thing about them is they both need nail trimmings, which is something I feel like people don't know. Um, they both have to have their nails cut. Trust me, their nails can get so curled and messed up. And then on top of that, they also both need to be groomed. So rabbits really need to be brushed out quite a lot. They, I don't know if the correct word is molt, but they like shed their fur. That way they get their winter fur and everything. So they will really shed. Guinea pigs on the other hand, don't shed as much, but they do need occasional grooming and stuff like that. Cause they can get messy. Now something else I thought I would just say is these two types of animals cannot be together ever. Guinea pigs cannot live with rabbits and vice versa, although it goes hand in hand. They cannot live together because rabbits actually carry a uh, 
I don't know if it's a bacteria or a disease, I don't know it off the top of my head, but they do carry something that can kill your guinea pigs, and in general, it just is not a smart idea. They do not speak the same language. They are not the same species. Uh, rabbits can kick them and break them. You know, it just overall is not a good idea. You do not want them having free roam time together or living together 24 seven and just overall no interaction. Let's get into like the differences between the two. So we're gonna start off with like pigs, but then say what's about the rabbits that makes it like different. So with guinea pigs, they are loud. This is something I think people need to keep in mind. Let me show you. They are very loud, incredibly loud. My rabbits, whenever I did that, just ran right over because they think it's time for veggies. Did they squeak? No, because they cannot. Rabbits are actually... Guys, I know, I'm sorry. It was just to demonstrate something. Okay, there's gonna be a little bit of squeaking. But uh, rabbits really can't make a ton of noise. They're pretty quiet in general. They do thump, so they like, pat their feet sometimes, which can be loud at times. And they can make other little sounds, but it's not as much as guinea pigs. Guinea pigs love to squeak. If they hear a bag rustle, they be squeaking. They are incredibly loud. <laughs> and I feel like that is something you need to keep in mind because if you do not want a loud animal, then rabbits are probably better for you. But honestly, like the squeaking never really bothers me. It only bothers me whenever I'm trying to concentrate and then they start going off. But that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, another thing about guinea pigs is they can be caged 24-7 and will only require floor time a couple times a week. So two, once to twice a week, they will need floor time to get out of their cage and roam and exercise a little bit extra. Now, to think about it this way, if you were a guinea pig, would you want to be stuck in a cage with your buddy 24-7 without an escape in the same surroundings? I would get kind of mad if I were that piggy. So... It's just good to get them out of their cage and get them different enrichment and let them chill, but do not separate them. That's not what I'm saying. That's just not a good idea. And then um, another thing about guinea pigs is they don't take up that much space. So they do need a larger size cage than most animals, but pretty much they need about 5.5 feet squared to 7.5 feet squared per piggy. That's pretty much what you need for them. Um, it kind of varies because I see people recommend different things. It seems to be 7.5 feet squared for two piggies, but I would personally just go with 5.5 feet squared per pig. With rabbits, on the other hand, they do need quite a bit of space. I believe it's like 12 square feet of space per rabbit. So for example, my cage is the minimum and it's 24 square feet of space. And even then people have a huge problem with it. So in general, rabbits need a ton of space. And on top of that, it's recommended that they get five plus hours of floor time, AKA free roaming time outside of their cage. So that is a huge thing to consider is that you're pretty much gonna have to dedicate a room to your rabbits, which means you're really gonna have to think about uh, bunny proofing and making sure they can't get into anything. You can, you, it is honestly recommended more to just free roam them in like your house or like a one room, which I personally think is great. I do that for the most part. They just go into their cage at night. Guinea pigs on the other hand, I wouldn't just, I would never free roam guinea pigs. They are too small in my opinion to have that happen. I mean, they would be able to get into so many nooks and crannies and get squished. And they're so small that it's pretty hard to see them. Like if they're by your foot, you could easily step on them. Now I know some people have considered free roaming or like do free roam and like if you like it, you like it. But I think if you're starting off with these guys, do not do that with guinea pigs. Another thing about guinea pigs is they can be spayed and neutered. Um, people are starting to do it more. Uh, they're starting to spay their females because they are at a higher risk of developing ovarian cysts. So some people are doing that with their spade females all the time, although it's still like an option. I personally haven't yet because I haven't really experienced that problem in any of my females. And that's just, I don't know. Um, but some people do always do it. But it's more of like an option type thing. And then you can neuter boars if you want them with females, but know that guinea pigs, it has to be one male in a group of females. It can't be two males in a group of four females. That doesn't work. And then rabbits on the other hand must be spayed and neutered. 
they have to be because females have an 80% chance of developing um, ovarian cancer, aka reproductive cancer, so they need to be spayed and neutered. It's pretty much a uh, standard now. So right off the bat, if you're going into, if you're looking to getting a rabbit and you want to get one off of Craigslist, know that you will have to drop a chunk of change to get them spayed or neutered. Keep in mind that you will be expected to pretty much get a surgery for your rabbit as soon as you get it or like you know a few months after you get it so be prepared for that something else about like grooming and stuff with these guys is guinea pigs can be bathed like once or twice a year some people do it every three months i personally don't bathe my guinea pigs but from what i can tell people are starting to recommend it more because they do get pretty dirty but do not bathe them like once a month, it's not good. It's not good for their skin. Rabbits, on the other hand, never bathe your rabbits. They groom themselves. They're always grooming each other, so do not bathe your rabbit. Next, guinea pigs can live in herds, so they can live in groups from two to like a huge amount. I have seen some rescues have herds of like 50 because they took in a whole bunch at once and decided to just do a huge herd. Um, but that can be tricky of course but just know that if you want a ton of little furry guys you can with rabbits on the other hand typically it is a lot harder to bond them and you mostly see either duos or trios and even then trios seem to be a little bit messy <laughs> at times the biggest group i've ever seen of rabbits and this was one time was in a facebook group where this girl had been able to bond seven rabbits together now do know that they have to all be spayed and neutered in your duo like you can't have one or your duo to trio you can't have one spayed and one neutered they all have to be spayed and neutered because they will start developing different aggressions towards each other another thing is it seems like it's really hard to find toys that guinea pigs like they like their tunnels but in general like wood toys at least with my guys they do not chew them they like cardboard and that's about it so finding toys for guinea pigs can be hard so then enrichment for your guinea pigs can be quite difficult because they just don't seem to show a sign in anything but food. Um, but trying to enrich them is something they do need, but it can be a struggle, trust me, I struggle with it. Rabbits on the other hand, I mean at least from the three that I've had, they seem to really enjoy toys. Like you can buy them wood toys to cardboard based shoes, to plastic toys, to just tunnels, everything, cardboard boxes, everything keeps them entertained apple sticks like just they're they like their toys and it entertains them and it's actually really cute <laughs> but know that you will probably have to spend a lot of money on toys for rabbits because they seem to enjoy them a lot now of course again guinea pigs do need toys in some aspect but it can be harder to find some that they'll actually play with another thing is guinea pigs live about five to seven years that's about their lifespan some people have had them live longer but that's typically their lifespan and then rabbits typically live about nine to ten years um now flemish giants do live less uh just because of their size and stuff they don't live to ten years they oftentimes live less than that so keep that in mind that if you're getting a baby guinea pig, you're gonna have it five to seven years. Whereas if you get a rabbit, you're gonna have it for nine to 10 years. So just keep that in mind. The thing is like sizes. With rabbits, you can get a lot of different sized rabbits. You can get a Netherland dwarf to a Flemish giant and all sizes in between. You can get a really small guy to a big guy. And I think that's really interesting. And they also have a lot of variety in coat color, ear type, they just, they have more options in looks with just, you know, you can get one with floppy ears, you can get one with standing up ears, longer fur, shorter fur, very, lots of colors whenever it comes to rabbits and sizes. Guinea pigs, there are a lot of colors but and like um, coat types, but that's about it. Um, their sizes do vary a little bit. Oftentimes though, guinea pigs are in the 800 to 1000 gram size. Although if they, there is a bigger breed of guinea pig called Kwai, I don't know how to say it, but it's a bigger breed of guinea pig and they do get pretty large. <laughs> They're just like big guys. Um, they are being bred less though from my understanding, probably due to their size. They were in the pet store trade a lot, um, but they seem to not be around as much anymore. Same thing though, in case you were wondering, guinea pigs, you can get hairless guinea pigs, whereas you can't get a hairless rabbit. So if you want a hairless animal, guinea pigs might be the route. <laughs> guinea pigs can really not be litter box trained. 
Some people say they can, some people say they can't. In short, they can't. I mean, if you think about it, guinea pigs poop and pee where they eat for the most part. So if you put a litter box where they're pooping and peeing the most, yeah, okay, they're litter box trained, but guinea pigs sleep and poop. Like, they pee and poop wherever they go, like wherever they sleep. So if that's gonna be a problem for you, just having to have a specific bedding, so you could get fleece, you could get Aspen shavings, you could get Carefresh for them, but just know that they will need some sort of bedding that you'll have to clean it like once to twice weekly. Whereas rabbits on the other hand can be litter box trained and then you'll only have to really change the litter box um, once or twice weekly or even spot clean it daily. Hey guys, it's editing me. I'm editing and I just wanted to say I forgot one of like the key differences between rabbits and guinea pigs I wanted to bring up but I feel like it's kind of important. To me, rabbits have a very potent smell compared to guinea pigs. Guinea pigs, the smell that they have is more just like dirty hay, which is expected because they like to sit and pee on their hay. Whereas rabbits on the other hand, their pee has a very potent smell and you can tell whenever you need to keep cage clean because you can smell your rabbit. So I don't know, it's not that bad. It's not like overwhelming, but it is definitely a difference I can tell from. Like for example, if I'm in my room sleeping in my bed, sometimes I can smell the rabbits. And I'm like, okay, that's the rabbits. They need cage clean. But then other than that, I mean, the guinea pigs, it's just like a hay smell, which is can still be strong if you don't clean them. But I did just want to say that they do have like a smell, but it's not bad, but I felt like it was something you guys should know about. So yeah, those are just some things to consider whenever you are looking into getting these guys. They are great little furry friends. I love both of them. If I had to personally choose, honestly, I would probably choose rabbits. They seem to be a lot more affectionate than guinea pigs, which is a difference. Um, Guinea pigs can be affectionate, but you really have to look for a friendly guinea pig off the bat, and then on top of that, you really need to work on taming them, which some people aren't really that into. I know I'm not, I don't. As long as they're good whenever I have to do nail trims and weighing, that's fine. But it is nice to have a bunny run over to you and want to be pet, you know? Yeah. Also, in my opinion, rabbits seem to have a little bit more of a personality, and this is just after having them for a year compared to having a ton of guinea pigs. Guinea pigs seem to have pretty basic personalities. You know, I end up with a little bit of a bossy one and a couple really shy ones. It doesn't really seem to have real personalities, whereas like my rabbits, they just, you know, one likes to be pet a ton and will come right over and loves to be groomed by her little bunny friend. But the other one, he doesn't really like being touched, but he loves running around, you know? You can really see the difference between them. Whereas with my guinea pigs, it's like you're all potatoes. You're all just potatoes with different fur types. So yeah, um, but they're both great. If I had to choose though, I'd probably choose rabbits just because they're incredibly cute. And guinea pigs can be a pain in the butt. For me, it's just because of the squeaking. If I'm being totally honest, it's the squeaking and the the cage, I think. Right now my cage sucks, if I'm being completely honest, but like trying to find a really like a cage that works for them is just hard. And I think it's because I made it hard. <laughs> In general, you can buy a lot of cages for guinea pigs that are suitable. I just suck at finding cages for mine. <laughs> I need to I need to redo it. But yeah, just the squeaking is for me what kind of gets annoying and it's because they're in my bedroom with me 24 seven. So also consider that. I have a little bit of a different aspect because I literally live with them all the time. <laughs> so yeah guys, that is the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoy. If you don't like subscribe, if you didn't then goodbye.